All right, hello. Uh, this is our project two. We chose the second option on the project description uh, called Boxes. I'm Hannah. Yes. I'm Jeremiah. <laughs> so um, this question, and it, there are two boxes um, with no mass that are on a frictional um, and horizontal surface. Uh, the blue box is on the left side and it's in contact with the spring that's been compressed. And that spring or that box is let go, comes across, hits the red block that's at rest in the center and compresses the spring. So what we're trying to find here is the um, distance that the spring on the right side is compressed. So here's a picture of what I just described. Um, our known quantities in this are the blue mass, the red mass, um, the compressed distance on the left side, and we know that the spring is a constant k. Uh, what we don't know is the maximum distance that the second spring is going to compress. Um, so some assumptions that we had to make in order to solve this problem, uh, we assume that the surface is frictionless and perfectly horizontal, meaning that um, there aren't going to be external forces uh, like friction force, gravitational force, that kind of stuff um, that we're going to account for. Uh, we're assuming that the springs are both ideal, meaning that Hooke's law is obeyed. Um, the boxes stick together once they collide. We're assuming that energy can, is conserved, excluding elastic collisions when the boxes collide. And momentum is conserved in this problem. We're assuming air resistance is negligible, and we're assuming the collision is not elastic. Um, so this is a first kind of just describing um, the uh, collision before, the collision or during the collision after. Um, of the boxes and what it's going to look like, what we're solving for. So here we have representations of the energy going through the problem. So on the left, um, we have the energy uh, being transferred to the spring or from the spring to the blue box um, as the spring is getting, as the spring is decompressing and pushing the uh, block to the right. Um, and so you can see that all of the energy from the spring gets pushed into the block. Um, and then in the second part here, which is after the collision, uh, you can see that the energy um, is all in the red and blue block, which are combined now, and um, get, gets, the energy gets transferred into the potential energy of the right spring um, until the blocks have a velocity of zero and they have no more energy. Um, and one important thing to note here is that uh, the total energy on the right in this example, which means um, after the collision, the total energy is lower than the total energy before the collision because it is an inelastic collision, which we know since they stick together. Um, so it does lose energy in that collision. So a couple things we use to calculate this, um, to calculate the uh, compression at the end. We used a uh, potential energy of a spring, which is one half kx squared, um, kinetic energy, which is one half nv squared, uh, conservation of energy, um, which just states that the energy, the initial energy and final energy uh, should be equal when energy is conserved. Um, and then conservation of momentum, which is uh, similarly saying the initial momentum um, should be equal to the final momentum of the system. So we split this up into three parts for calculating. Um, first, we used energy analysis on the spring and the blue block to find the velocity of the blue block as it leaves the spring and continues moving. So here we have the initial energy and final energy. Uh, we know the initial energy is all in the left spring. So we know that um, we can represent that with one half kx squared and the kinetic energy of the block is zero because it has no velocity. The final energy, we know that the spring is fully decompressed to so that equilibrium, so it has zero potential energy. And the kinetic energy of the block can re be represented as one half mv squared. So using conservation of energy, we can set them equal to each other here. 
and uh, use a little algebra to solve that the velocity of the blue block after it leaves the spring is the square root of kx squared um, over the mass of the blue block. Knowing that velocity, we can go on part two, which is when the blocks collide. So this is, we use momentum analysis for this one. Uh, we have the initial momentum as uh, the mass of the blue block times the velocity of the blue block um, and the uh, momentum of the red block, which is zero. And the final momentum is um, the mass of the blue block plus the red block times the velocity of those two, because they're stuck together now. Using conservation of momentum, we can set them equal to each other and, and plug in that uh, velocity of the blue block at the start that we have solved in the last part uh, to get the momentum of uh, the blue block plus the red block is equal to uh, the mass of the blue block times um, that square root uh, k x initial squared over the mass of the blue block that we solved earlier. And using algebra, we can find this equation for the velocity of the two blocks as they're moving after the collision. Finally, we can go into the third part, which is uh, also an energy analysis. So we have our initial energy, which is um, the kinetic energy of the blue plus red block, which we can write, represent again as one of mv squared. And then the potential energy of the spring, right spring, which is zero because it hasn't collided yet. And the final energy, um, which is when the blocks are stop moving, so their kinetic energy is zero. And the spring's kinetic energy, or the spring has all the kinetic energies, or all the all the energy, which is in potential, potential energy, which is one fkx squared. So again, using conservation of energy, we set that to zero and set them equal to each other and do a little bit of algebra to solve that. The distance that the right spring is compressed is uh, this distance that the initial spring is compressed um, times the square root of the mass of the blue block over the mass of the blue block plus the mass of the red block. So we plugged in some reasonable numbers here. Let's say we compress the spring on the left four centimeters. The mass of the blue block is one kilogram. The mass of the red block is three kilograms. Um, we can do some calculations here, just plug in the numbers, and we get that the spring on the right is compressed two centimeters. Okay, so first we um, determine if it's correct. And as you can see by our picture, they are correct. We wanted meters in the end, and we got meters. They, um, yeah, that's pretty self explanatory. And our estimated numerical answer is reasonable because we estimated um, earlier on when we solved symbolically that the answer should be less um, than the initial compression xi. Um, and it was, it went from four centimeters to two centimeters in the end. Um, so this means that our reasoning holds true and that there is some energy that is lost um, in the inelastic collision between the two blocks. And therefore the distance the spring is compressed is gonna be less than uh, the initial compression. And so last with sense making, uh, we wanted to see if our symbolic answer makes physical sense. And we did this through covariational sense making. Um, so this was our symbolic answer first, X is equal to x, which is equal to the xi times the mass um, of the blue block over the mass blue times the mass red, um, all to the, or it's all like square root. Yes. And um, increasing or decreasing xi will uh, increase or decrease the final compression, which makes sense because if the spring is compressed more, um, the x i is increased, then the x on the other side on the right side is um, going to increase as well, uh, and likewise will decrease. Um, increasing the mass of the blue block is going to increase the final compression because there's more energy moving um, that have been compressed on the left hand side that's moving, hitting the red block with more mass, um, and therefore. Uh, less energy will be lost in that collision. And um, similarly, if the mass of the red block is changed, first, if it is decreased, the final compression um, is going to be more 
because, um, I mean, no, it's going to be less if the mass is increased because um, more energy will be lost in that collision. However, if uh, the red block wasn't there and or mass was negligible, mass was zero, the compression would be the same on either side because no energy is going to be lost to friction or external forces um, when the map or the blue mass moves from the left to the right. Okay, now on to the reflection. Uh, one, we had a couple similar problems to uh, what we'd worked on in other classes compared to this. The first problem was the box problem we worked on in one of the weeks left or one of the week studios. Uh, the problem is a block of mass M on a level frictionless surface is attached to an ideal massless spring of constant K. It's initially stretched at time t, uh, t initial, and the block is released from rest x, and is, which is equal to xi. At some uh, time final, the block reaches x equals zero, moving to the left with the speed of uh, v final for the interval from t, uh, t initial to t final. Draw a vector to indicate the displacement associated with each force. Uh, similarities with this is they both start with the potential energy from the displacement of the spring, the, they both want the final displacement of the spring to be calculated. Uh, some differences, the spring is being pulled away from the wall to form potential energy instead of being compressed in this problem, as well as the block is attached to the spring so that the motion of the block is identical, or is identical to the spring's motion. Uh, another problem was uh, a potential energy diagram problem from lecture 16. This one was the potential energy of a spring is given by uh, U one half K X squared, where the potential energy, and then it asks us to find where the potential energy is largest, smallest. How can you tell whether it's the kinetic energy largest, smallest? How can you tell? Uh, in this case, uh, the problem starts the similarities are the problem starts with the known initial displacement of the spring, as well as the spring has initial uh, potential energy and the surface uh, that the block is moving on is known to be frictionless. Some differences, uh, the final displacement of the spring is given where in the box question, we had to find the final displacement. Uh, the spring and the block are attached to each other and the spring is stretched not compress in this problem. Uh, the final uh, similar problem we came across was in week eight homework. The question, question one, the apple on a string, on a spring, you have a vertically, a vertical spring with constant K, which is initially neither stretched nor compressed. You attach an apple with a known mass of M to the spring and release it from rest at time equals zero. The apple moves downward and then comes to rest momentarily at t equals t, t final. We're falling some distance. Determine the distance the apple has fallen. Uh, some similarities and differences of this problem is the similarities. Uh, the question is asking for the displacement of the spring from its starting equilibrium. The system is, fr is frictionless and the mass of the objects are known as well as the spring constant being known as well. Some differences, the system is represented in the vertical plane and not the horizontal plane. The spring starts at its equilibrium and is neither stretched nor compressed. And the problem is being acted on by external forces, not all internal forces of the system. Thank you. Thank and you so much for watching. Yeah, have a lovely day.